Hey, grown-ups, unexpected preschool teachers, how are you doing? All right, my name is Ms. Lisa, and I'm here for another edition of Preschool at Home, fun things, idea, fun ideas that you can do at home to replicate some of the ideas you might be doing in preschool, um, and just to help us get ready for school when we go to kindergarten. So uh, this week we had a theme of pets for story time, so I have some pets-themed ideas that you can try at home. Um, I try to keep them as minimal effort as possible um, and as much uh, hands-on time for the kids as possible. Sorry, mine are running in and out while I'm trying to record this, of course. All right, so the first thing I was thinking is that we love to make popsicle stick puzzles at Explore More Story Time. So we will, you just put together some puzzle st or popsicle sticks, um, tape them together on one side, turn them over, boop, and um, when they're taped together, they'll stay together. You can write the name of the pet that you're thinking of. I wrote fish, I know. Um, and then you can draw or have your child draw um, the pet that they are thinking of. And then once they're done and it's colored in, we haven't colored this one in yet, you can take the tape off of it and mix it up and then it's a puzzle for your child to put together. If you don't have these big popsicle sticks, I love doing this with the smaller popsicle sticks, the more narrow ones. And instead of writing, you know, the letters that make up the word, you can write one to 10 along the bottom and your child can then work on sequencing and recognizing those numbers. So it's a really fun activity. Um, it builds reading skills or writing skill, or well, it builds writing skills too when you're coloring it in, but it also builds math skills. So I love those, super easy to make. They take maybe five minutes and the making them is part of the process, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, you know, I have a bunch of other kids at home too, so I'm trying to do school for a lot of kids. So the least amount of time I can put into something, the better. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is pattern blocks. I don't know if you have used pattern blocks before. When I was younger, back in the dark ages, they were referred to as tangrams. Um, I've also heard them called like tessellations, but pattern blocks are um, different shapes that all of the shape is the same color, so same shape, same color, but each of the colors are a different shape. And they're so fun because you can work to build different types of things out of them. And there are printable ones. If you don't wanna buy anything, you can print out some paper tangrams where you would then cut them out. Um, usually the resources I've seen call them for free call them printable pattern blocks. And then you can also find ideas where you try to match up the pattern blocks with the pattern that they have. So um, we just got a new set because I, I was curious to see what they had. And it had some different activities, little cards that have a picture on them and the kids can try to replicate the picture. Um, some of the printable ones I've seen have just black and white outlines where you're trying to figure out what color goes there and some of them have the color filled in so that if your child is still maybe new to the idea, they can try to figure it out based on the color. So the black and white's a little bit more advanced. Um, but again, those were called pattern blocks. You can find lots of them that are animals that you would consider pets. Um, and my daughter, because we just got those, has spent hours playing with them this week. Thank goodness, right? All right. The next thing I was thinking that you could do was play veterinarian at home. You can take care of some of your stuffed animals. You can do research as to what pets really need. Um, if you are looking for a book about that, Maisie Gets a Pet has a bunch about that. Lola Gets a Cat also has a lot about that. Um, but you can play veterinarian with just the doctor's kits that you have at home. And if you don't have a doctor's kit, if you have popsicle sticks, if you have, my kids love using toilet paper now that it's not as much of a hot commodity. You can use toilet paper to wrap and pretend that bones are broken. That's like one of their favorite things to do. Um, so you can expand and do a lot of different things with vet, playing vet. Um, and remember, a vet is just a doctor to animals. Uh, the next thing I was thinking you could do is to take a good old paper bag and turn it into a paper bag puppet pet. Um, my older daughter helped her draw 
dragons and unicorns are the most important things in our house. So we have a lot of dragon pets. Um, but she helped her draw a dragon and then she colored it in and illustrated it. But you can see the mouth just goes right here. And then that gives them a new pet to play with. Um, another thing I was thinking is that there's a song called Move Like an Animal. And that's a fun one. You can find that, I think, on YouTube and listen to it there and dance along with that. You can also find a lot of animal-themed yoga activities that would be lots of fun. Or you can make up your own. You can try to figure out what kind of pose a dog would do and what kind of pose a cat would do and what kind of pose a bird or a hermit crab or a rat, whatever you have as a pet at your house, you could try to figure out what kind of poses they would do too. And my last idea, I did not make a new one for this and I'm so sorry because the one I made um, has been used outside a lot, but is the idea of making an alligator or crocodile out of a container that would usually hold dishwasher detergent. So um, hopefully you recognize it because I don't want to show you labels. And really, if you have small kids that are the mouthy type where they like to put things in their mouth, you want to cover up all the labels and make it not at all recognizable for safety. Okay. So mine is a little bit older. Like I said, we haven't had problems with this, but we just stuck on some googly eyes. If you don't have googly eyes, you can just draw some on with Sharpie. Notice how he has these lovely teeth. So he's just asking to get turned into an alligator or a crocodile. I can never remember which one has the rounded nose. So bad about that. Um, so we named this one Chompers, and Chompers at our house likes to go outside and help us collect black walnuts that fall from our tree because it's the only way we'll pick up the walnuts. <laughs> but if you are using this as a learning activity inside of your house, you can have the your child feed Chompers pom-poms or they can feed them ping pong balls and whatever you're using if you want if it's something smaller try to use some tweezers so we're working on that pincer grip I know I'm obsessive right uh, and use the pincer grip to pick up the pom-poms or the ping pong balls um, if they're just picking up ping pong balls with these two fingers, that's still working on that skill. It's still fantastic. And you can count, they can count how many they can put in. When they've put in a bunch of pom-pom balls, you can dump them all out and try to figure out which color they put in the most of, things like that. Um, if they're doing just pom-pom or ping pong balls, oh, those sound so similar. You can just put in as many ping pong balls as will fit and see how many you think will fill it up. So Chompers is obviously always hungry. He's just a super hungry alligator crocodile made from dish detergent box. All right. So hopefully that helps a little bit. I'm trying to cover up all the labeling so I don't get in any trouble there. Um, I hope that gives you some fun ideas to do this week. I always enjoy Pets Week. Um, if you have unfortunately lost a pet recently, this is a fantastic opportunity to have a heart to heart about what loss is and going through loss. Um, I always set aside a little bit of my story times about pets to talk about it because almost always there's somebody who has recently lost a pet or even not very recently but kids hold on to those things all right i hope that that gives you some fun ideas i really hope that it's an enjoyable week for you and that some of these preschool ideas have been helpful for you good luck with your pandemic preschool i'll see you soon bye